Ah. Hello, my friends. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to configure your trading DOM in Sierra chart so that you can trade and view more volatile symbols like NASDAQ futures, micro Bitcoin futures, or stock symbols. As you can see here, if you look at my screen, I have the NASDAQ futures right in the middle and the depth of market is actually quite readable. You can also see I have a numbers bars chart here. Now, I don't really use the numbers bars that much in my own trading, but really what I want to show you guys is how you can combine the order book increments in a way that makes it more readable. And the only way I got it like this is because Sierra chart has some features that allow you to combine the tick increment and then apply that to the order book as well as apply it to the recent trades columns here in the middle. So you can actually read and see at every single price point how many trades are going through and how many are willing to buy and how many are willing to sell at each price point. Now I'll just show you quickly if I go into the chart settings and I turn off these features what the DOM looks like and it looks like that. As you can see, it's not readable. You cannot see what's going through at each price unless you zoom in the DOM like this, unless you change the vertical scaling of the chart, but that's not practical because that means your DOM is going to be going up and down your screen and you're not going to be able to follow it. So in order to tackle this, Sierra chart has developed some features some functionality to combine what's called combined market depth increment in ticks. That's what we're going to cover in this video. I'm also going to show you how to get your footprints to line up to that market depth combined increment and also how to get your horizontal grid lines to line up to that. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Chris. This is Virillo Trading and I make videos about software like Sierra Chart and Interactive Brokers. And if you guys require personalized remote assistance, you can always reach out to me at support at virillotrading.com and check out my webpage virillotrading.com slash remote hyphen assistance. If you appreciate my content, you can also check out virillotrading.com slash tips, which is a one-time donation page where you guys can just send a tip and it supports my work immediately, okay? And that uses Stripe as a back end. Okay, so let's get into it right now. What I'm going to do is start with the fresh chart book and I'm going to open a few symbols here, find symbol, and I'm going to put a few symbols on the chart just to give you guys various examples. So I'm going to put one symbol that we do not need to apply any combined increment to, and that's going to be US 10 year note futures. Um, then I'll go over to CME and I will add in micro Bitcoin futures. Um, so that would be this contract, open intraday chart. And then I will add in NASDAQ futures. And I'll also add in a stock symbol like SPY. Now I have four symbols in my chart book. I'm going to go up to window, tile vertically, so we can see each of our four charts here in a vertical manner. The next thing I'm going to do is open the chart DOM for these charts. There's two ways of doing it. You can go to trade and then do trading chart DOM on and that enables trading for your chart. But if you're not planning on trading from any of these charts, you can simply do show market data columns. So I'll do that for this video. So I'll do it for all four charts. And if we look at our depth of market here, we can see the bids and offers for each of our markets. For example, on 10 year note futures, it's very easy to see the order book. We can clearly see how many are bid at each price and how many are offered. Whereas if we go over to micro Bitcoin futures, it becomes quite difficult to see unless we start zooming in the chart, which is again, very impractical if you want to keep your chart in a way that is, you know, kind of readable. And I'll full screen the chart just so you can see. So let's say you have a one minute chart like this. You can see your price graph. You might have other indicators on there, but you can't read the order book. How do we fix this problem? Let's go about showing how to do that now. And the purpose of this also is to show what's currently trading at those prices and be able to read what's currently trading. So just as an example on this first chart here for ZN, I'm going to go up to trade, customize chart trade DOM columns. And then I will add in the recent bid volume and recent ask volume columns so we can see what kind of volume is, is being traded at those prices. And you can see now these columns are, are appearing here in the middle. And because we have a wide tick increment, it's very easy to see how many are trading. You can see 47 just traded there at 31 and a half. Fine. If I add in those columns to this NASDAQ chart, so I'll just use a keyboard shortcut to get into that same menu. I'll add in recent bid volume and recent ask volume. And you can see that it's very difficult to read how many are going through. I mean, we can see, but the only way would be to change the vertical scale, which we do not want to do. So how do we change this? How do we fix this? It's actually very easy. 
So we start by selecting our chart, making sure it's selected, right? When you click on your chart, you can see on the title bar that it's selected. So I'll select the NASDAQ chart here, chart number three. Then I'll go to chart, chart settings, then go to market depth. And then this is the item we're paying attention to here first, which is market depth, combined increment and ticks. We can combine it by a number of ticks. So let's say we say we want to combine our market depth increment by four ticks. Apply it and you can now see that the order book is readable. Okay, you can combine it in more ticks if you want. Let's say six, but let's do four for the purpose of this video. So that means that each one of these order book levels now is actually four ticks combined and that's allowing it to be readable. I'm still in chart settings under market depth. You can apply that combined increment to the recent bid ask volume columns. And that's this item right here. Apply combined increment in ticks to recent bid ask volume columns. Set it to yes. And now you can see that our recent bid ask volume columns are lined up with the order book. Isn't that great? Okay. Now there is something to note about this particular setting. Sometimes I've noticed, and this is probably going to be fixed by the time I release this video, but in the case that it's not, depending on the number you set in the market depth combined increment in ticks, there are some circumstances where you might see overlapping numbers in the recent traded bid ask volume columns. If you do see that, just experiment with the number here, change the number around until the overlapping numbers go away. So let's do an example now for this stock here, SPY. This is under delayed data, but just know that Sierra chart has real time, the full consolidated tape for US equities. Okay, it's just that I'm not subscribed to it, so I have delayed data here. So I'm going to start by adding in the columns to that chart. This is chart number four here now, SPY. I'll add in the trade DOM columns by going to trade, customize chart trade DOM columns. I'll add in recent bid volume, recent ask volume. I'll arrange the columns the way I want them. It's not very readable because this is a stock and the minimum tick increment is one cent. So what we're actually seeing is how many shares are trading at each single price, at each individual price. So again, what we would do is go to chart settings while our chart is selected, go to market depth and set a combined increment in ticks for the market depth. Let's say I set four and then I apply that combined increment to the recent bid ask volume columns. So again, if you start to see overlapping numbers in the recent traded columns, then just experiment with the market depth combined increment in ticks and try to find a number where you don't get overlapping numbers right now. Oh, there we go. We had an overlapping number very briefly and then it went away. So what I've noticed for stock symbols that have a minimum tick increment of one cent, I found that setting this to three didn't ever result in any overlapping numbers. So the next couple of things we need to cover here is how to align our grid lines to this new combined increment or to this new tick increment for our order book. That's the first thing. And then the other thing would be how to set our footprint chart. If you do use a footprint chart or a numbers bars chart to that same combined increment. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll maximize this chart for the NASDAQ and then I will add a footprint study or a numbers bar study. I'll go up to analysis studies and then I'll find numbers bars. So let's add numbers bars, wait for that to load and I'll zoom in the chart. And you can see that it's really almost impossible. It is impossible to read these numbers. So how do we fix that? That's actually a different setting because it relates to the volume at price multiplier for the chart. And we can change that by going to chart, chart settings, chart data, and then volume at price multiplier for intraday chart. You want to set this to the same number that you set under market depth combined increment and ticks. So in this case, I set it to four for this chart. So I'll go back to chart data, volume at price multiplier for intraday chart, and I'll change it to four. And now you can see the numbers of our footprint are lining up to our order book columns. Great. Now, there is no way to dynamically change those numbers whenever you change symbols. Like let's say you're somebody who watches stocks and each one has a different tick size or different level of volatility because some stocks have high prices and some stocks have lower prices, right? There's no way to dynamically change those numbers. Although there is a study made by Frozen Tundra that you may want to check out called Auto Volume by Price where he does automatically adjust the volume by price multiplier for the Andrew Day chart. So that might be something you might want to look into and you can check out his GitHub repository. I'll put a link to one of his videos there so you can have a look at that. 
but I'm not sure that that's going to work. I'm just showing you how to set these items in manually, okay? The next thing I'm going to show you is how to get your grid lines on your chart because grid lines are nice. It kind of gives you a bit of visual organization. It's pretty simple. You go up to chart, horizontal grid, and you can select all regions or select which chart region you want to add it to. I'll just do all regions. You can see now the horizontal grid appears. However, it's not aligned with our order book or anything here, the way you fix that is actually you can set it manually in the scale setting. So if I right click on the price scale of our chart, the value scale, and then select scale settings, this item called scale increment, if you leave it on zero, it's going to automatically set the scale increment based on whatever you have set for your vertical scale. But you can actually manually specify the scale increment, which is going to impact the horizontal grid increment as well. So keep in mind that for NASDAQ futures, the tick size is 25 cents, 0 0.25. And we set a market depth combined increment of four. So we're combining four times 25 cents. So if we set our scale increment to one, in this case, it should line up exactly with our order book. And you can see that's exactly what it does. So basically the formula for that is you set the scale increment number to a value that is equal to the tick size times the combined increment you set in the market depth combined increment in ticks setting. Also note that these combining features do not apply to some of the other columns on the trade DOM yet. This may get added in a future release, but for example, if I add in a different column like the market depth pulling and stacking, you will see that that combined increment does not apply to the pulling and stacking column. So hopefully they add that in a future release. That would be nice to see. Okay, so I have a market replay set up here and I just wanted to show you how combining the market depth increment and ticks impacts trading when you're placing orders on the trade DOM or the chart DOM. And I'm pleased to announce to you that it doesn't impact it in any negative way at all. So if I go up to trade and then chart trade mode on or trading chart DOM on. Now I've enabled trading for the chart. If I hover over the bid column or the ask column, you can see that that box that it creates is going in between our order book increments, which is clearly showing that it is possible to put orders in between our order book increments. So for example, this would be a price of 18,432. And one tick below it would be a price of 18,431.75. And if I clicked right there, I put my buy order in. So I'm clearly able to still put orders in between those increments. I'll go to trade, trade orders window just to show you that as well, that I did put my order in at that price. And of course, all of your other order modification keyboard shortcuts that you may use will work exactly the same, just like they would when you're not combining the increments on the DOM. So basically it has no impact on trading at all. All right, guys, that's going to conclude this video on how to combine the order book on Sierra chart. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.